think are some of the primary reasons for you not being featured on the ticket? On the ticket? Yes, that's well, John McCain. You, um, you know, on the ticket would mean like I'd have to be part of the ticket. Well, I'm not part of the ticket. Featured maybe at the convention, yes. that sort of thing. Mainly because I haven't given uh, I, uh, an endorsement statement for John McCain because I haven't been able to accept his positions and and uh, I just don't think they'd be qualified then to participate. Even if you represent Republican beliefs and values and convictions, which I believe I do. Okay. Uh, with the recent you know, success in the war and the surge, I know you were originally opposed to it, but uh, what are your feelings now? Well, it all depends on how you measure success. Uh, if you're doing something wrong and you're successful, should you celebrate it? You might worry about it because that might encourage them to do it again. But what about the cost? Nearly a trillion dollars of money and 4,000 men and women killed and 40,000 people wounded. What a tragedy draining all these resources, and it's not over. Even if all our troops left, but we kept the bases there, we still have the incitement to get people like the Al-Qaeda to come after us, because what they detest is our occupation of their territory, and that still exists. So we're a long way from so-called victory. There is no way to have victory. We can't win the hearts and minds of those people. Uh, over there. So I would say we have a long way to go and all they're talking about, both candidates, they're talking about being tough on Iran and putting more troops in Afghanistan, maintaining our bases in Iraq and sending more support to Georgia. So that is all to me very dangerous. Uh, what about you know, looking ahead for your future? Can you tell me about it, shed some light, what plans do you have? Well, I don't worry about it too much. I don't have any absolute firm plans other than continuing uh, our campaign for liberty in the form of a new organization to help build an organization that will uh, support candidates that have these similar beliefs, individuals to run for office, but also run an educational network because they, so many of the young people have been fascinated with uh, the issue of the monetary policy and the Federal Reserve. There's a lot of education that can be done. So I'm looking forward uh, to promoting those issues and those yeah. viewpoints. But, you know, I have, uh, I'm up for re-election in my congressional district. I don't have an opponent, so mm -hmm. I, I think I can win that re-election. <laughs> and I'll be there, and, uh, and then I'll have time to uh, promote uh, and encourage the enthusiasm that's been built uh, during this campaign. Okay, and last question. Uh, what was your first job, and what did you take away from that? My first job occurred when I was five years old. My dad had a small little dairy in bottles for glass bottles. And I was a bottle inspector. And I would pick one bottle up at a time, inspect it because the bottles were hand washed, and put them in a case. The incentive was if I found the dirty one, I got a penny. <laughs> so it was an incentive system, and I had to be responsible. I had to be there at a certain time. And of course, we abused all kinds of child labor laws. But it was a lesson uh, that my parents taught me that work was good, rewards were good, and you had to have incentives. And, uh, and, uh, and that was my first job. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.